Hello, welcome back to the channel and essentially what is the the painting video of the Rubicon models uh, 105 millimeter uh, howitzer. Um, so this is always my sort of favorite part of any project really the painting this is where i think we bring things to life so as i say the the crew itself um they're going to be painted off camera I've, I've done videos on the channel before about how i paint those so this is actually painting the uh the gun itself um so as you can see i've mounted it all on cocktail sticks or toothpicks depending wherever you are in the world um and essentially we're going to prime it so we're priming it mr surfacer or mr finishing surfacer 1500 black um, and I'm going to be spraying that through my Ultimate Modeling Products Apex with a 0.35 needle at about 18 to 20 PSI. So we'll get a, a black primer all over this, let it dry, and then we'll come back and start putting some colour onto it. So we're in the spray booth. Obviously, Mr. Surfacer is a lacquer-based paint. I've thinned it about 50-50, mm, probably a bit more, 60-40 in favour of thinner to paint uh, with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner. Um, so that will enable us to uh, to get a nice thin coat of primer on this. Um, but it is lacquer, so we're in the spray booth. I'm going to be wearing a respirator and all that sort of safety precaution type stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is mute the sound from me um, while I spray this, because all you're going to hear really is the compressor and the spray booth. Uh, and we'll get some primer on this. So uh, I'll come back and talk about that once I've done. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are. So essentially, dead simple. We're just covering the entire model in the Mr. Surfacer black. Um, the reason we're using black in, 
it's a great color for primer anyway but what it does do is it first it will show any bits that maybe we've missed a seam that we're going to see or anything like that secondly it creates a natural shadow so when we come to apply the base color to it um if we do miss so on the gun itself for example there's lots of sort of intricate um details and if we happen to miss a slight section of that what we've now got is a black uh primer color underneath so it will create a natural shadow rather than sort of a light gray or something similar where you're going to see that plastic sort of through the base color um so there it is so that's the the primer down um we'll let that dry i'll leave that now probably a good six seven hours um although it will be touch dry in about 30 minutes um but i'll leave it a good long time to cure and then we'll come in and we'll put the base color on it so uh that's it for now i'll see you in a few hours once uh once this is fully cured and dried so uh, see you in a bit okay so we are dry essentially so the uh the primer coat is now dry and cured so we're going to apply the base color now um now i love the the olive drab us olive drab uh paint set from from ammo by mig um on all the rubicon vietnam stuff that's what i've used so that we're not going to deviate from that we're going to use use that on this um, so the first colour is Olive Drab Dark, which is MiG-925, um, and I'm going to be spraying that through my Apex again, but this time with a 0.2 needle um, at about sort of 15 PSI, and we'll get a nice, smooth, solid base colour of Olive Drab on this gun um, before we go in and do some highlights. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to spray that again. I'm going to shut up because you're just going to hear the spray booth and the compressor and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'll shut up and get this on. Okay, folks, so there's the base color, Olive Drab Dark is on. This will dry um, certainly within the next half an hour. Um, and then we'll come in and just add some very subtle highlights to it. 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll add some highlights with the airbrush. Um, yeah, and then pretty much the airbrush side of, of painting it is, is done. Um, and then we're gonna go in and do some chipping and pin wash and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but for now, there we are. And it's it's looking nice, not the right sort of color. Um, and in between, so in between here, the barrel and all that, we, there is a little bit of black coming through now, which is what we wanted. It gives us that natural shadowing because um, this is a very dark olive drab anyway. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the plan is working this far. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in a minute and we'll, we'll get some highlights on this. All right. Okay, so the olive drop base is now dry, or well, certainly dry enough for us to uh, add a highlight. Um, and the color we're gonna be using for the highlight, again from MIG from their olive drop set is light base, which is MIG 927. Um, so essentially all we're gonna do is pick out some of the bigger areas around the gun and the base plate and the wheels, etc., um, and just kind of highlight it where the sun would catch it and potentially fade the olive drab. Um, and then that's it really, we'll clear coat it and then that's the airbrushing side of things done. So again, I'll switch off the sound because it's noisy um, and we'll get this sprayed. So there we go, doesn't take long at all. What's that, about a minute, minute and a half. Um, so we're just picking out these lighter areas. And then once we come in with the pin wash and, and all that sort of stuff, it will shadow as well, um, back towards the darker color. Um, top of the base plate, center of the wheels. And that's it, it it's as simple as that. Um, and it, hopefully it'll pick up on camera where we've got these lighter areas now. Um, so next is to clear coat it. Um, with a with a gloss coat in preparation for a pin wash, um, and I'll be using the VMS gloss, which is this stuff here, an acrylic gloss straight from the bottle through the 0.35 apex, um, and we let that dry. That will naturally darken the colour anyway with a gloss coat on it, and then I'll show you once we're over at the bench um, how I'm going to do the pin wash and all that sort of stuff, um, and then we're into kind of weathering it up really. Um, so yeah, I'll get this clear coated once that's dry. Um, and then next time you see, well, see this, not me, um, we'll be down at the bench when we're putting a, a pin wash and all that sort of stuff on it. Um, so yeah, see you in a bit. Okay. So the base colors on, on the, on the gun itself, it's looking very, very shiny now. And the reason for that is it's been covered in a clear uh, gloss coat, uh, which was the VMS uh, varnish in gloss. And the reason it's been glossed at this stage is because we're going to do uh, a pin wash. So ideally around all these sort of details around these panels, we're going to bring out that, that rivet detail and brackets and all that sort of stuff. And the way we're going to do that is by using the Tamiya panel line accent color in black now this is an enamel based product um so it's in a 
this is available from Ultimate Modeling Products, which is just a holder, uh, which stops us knocking this bottle over because it will go everywhere. Comes with a brush applicator, very thin, and it should, on the, on the clear coat, now we're nice and smooth, it should just run around uh, sort of a capillary action um, around all the details that we want it to. This will take uh, about sort of 45 minutes to dry. Once it's dry, we can then go in either with a thin brush, uh, a cotton bud, and some odorless thinners. And what we can then do is start to remove the excess that we don't want. And the idea being that we will be left with sort of a an outline around all these details. Um, so it changes the look of the base coat essentially um, and adds some sort of artificial shadowing, accentuates all the detail that's molded into the kit, etc. etc. So it's gonna take a while, um, because it does. There's no there's no shortcuts to this step at all. And you can also use a thin oil wash to do this sort of thing. Um, but you can see there, although we've got some excess, but that will be removed, how it starts to accentuate um, the detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole thing, let it dry, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I remove it. Um, and then hopefully we're left with a, a nicely detailed piece. And then we can move on sort of weathering and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back. So see you in about ooh, an hour, maybe. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so the the accent color, the panel line wash or whatever we're gonna call it, is, is dry. Um, so you can see here um, that it's kind of dried in all the recesses, but we have got a bit of excess where we don't want it essentially. So, here I have a selection of cotton buds, um, so some Tamiya sort of thinner ones and just your normal sort of household cotton buds. We need to remove the excess with essentially an odorless thinner. Um, so I use this stuff, which is Sansador by Winsor & Newton. Um, I've always used this really and it works absolutely fine. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is moisten the end of your cotton tip, cotton bud, whatever you wanna call it, and then remove that excess moisture from the cotton bud onto just a bit of kitchen paper. And then what you can do, so if we get the model here, is around the areas where you don't want that kind of excess, we can just start to gently remove it like so and then what you'll be left with eventually is the wash literally where you want it and these are um, double-ended for want of a better term so then you can use the dry end just to go in and just start to remove that excess moisture now. The last thing you want to do is have these really wet because all you're going to do is remove everything um, and that's not the aim of the game here. Um, so we're going in and just removing the little bit that we want and leaving it in the recesses where we want it. And then what that will do at the end of that process is that will leave all the detail, it really makes it pop. It's very difficult at the moment to see this because of the gloss coat varnish. Um, obviously the light's reflecting off the model. Um, but to my eye, it, it looks a bit different, um, which is good. And then once the flat coat's on, we'll, uh, we'll see this in all its glory, so to speak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around clean all this up um, and then I'll put a flat coat on again I'll be using VMS 
their matte coat. Um, once that's done and dry, we'll then come back and then we'll start to move on to some sort of highlighting and, and weathering and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do that and I'll see you once this is flat coated and dry. So uh, yeah, see you soon. Okay, folks. So we have uh, flat coated it. So as you can see, that shine has gone now. Um, and we're, we're ready to start sort of edge highlighting, making the details pop and all that good stuff. So the way I'm going to do this is we're going to be using a Citadel color, which is Shab to Bone. So it's like a buff type color. Um, and we're going to be dry brushing it around the edges. So I use a piece of cardstock. I find it when you're removing the paint um, from the brush in order to dry brush it, um, cardstock for me works better than kitchen roll or tissue paper or whatever um, because you don't tend to get the fibers that you would um, from kitchen paper. So, typical dry brush, I'll show you what I'm doing. So, we've got some paint on the brush, and then essentially all we're going to do is scratch it along the surface pretty much and remove as much of that paint as we can till we get to this stage like so now we'll start with the actual carriage itself um so we're just gently over the kind of raised detail and the edges we're just gonna do that and try on each section try and keep your brush going in the same direction and what that will do is make it a bit more um, uniform that we're not doing this to create scratches or anything like that we're actually doing this to uh, edge highlight essentially in a really um, easy and efficient way and really bring out that that sort of detail so you can see there on that panel now we are start really starting to get get the detail coming back through now um, and the shadow is remaining from the from the pin wash um, and we're starting to get the kind of effect that we're after so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole gun um, and we're going to do this um, and yeah hopefully you can start to see that detail coming through now. Um, so I'm going to get this done and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the all the bits, wheels on, all that sort of stuff and then some light weathering. Um, yeah and then we're going to be ready for a base I think. So uh, yeah I'm going to carry on with this and I'll see you all soon. okay then so here we are we are done at this stage so as you can see all the kind of highlights are being brought out the wheels are on the base plates on but that's not glued on yet um yeah so it's all kind of done um really now this sort of final weathering and stuff will happen w when it's on the base um, and with that in mind i have cut a little bit of blue xps foam so it's going to sit in that sort of position on the base um, and the crew and everything around it um, with the, the stowage that comes in the kit. I'm not going to show you painting the, the stowage, stowage or the, the accessories, so the empty shells, um, the, the crates and all that, because I've done that on the Sherman video. So if you want to look back on the channel, look at the Ryfield model Sherman, you can see how I do that sort of stuff. And I'll be doing it in exactly the same way. So there's no point showing it twice the gun itself is done um what i have been doing off camera whilst filming is i have finished the crew so we've got four crew um and again the reason i haven't showed me painting these is because i've showed these uh, or how i paint rubicon figures particularly us um on 
the channel before so go back and have a look at that video if you're interested but yeah so the crew are all done they are mounted on the rubicon bases currently that's just for ease of painting um what will happen is once um once i'm ready to to mount them onto the diode base or the vignette base rather and then i'll break them away from these rubicon bases um drill some a small hole somewhere it won't be seen um, and add some wire and then they will just place on um, in the relevant position so the kind of position we'll be going for is something sort of him in the middle there loading the gun him getting ready commander in that sort of position and yeah so you can see by looking at it um it's going to be a very small vignette it's only sort of just over four inches square um but it's going to look quite effective and then with the, the crates and stuff here some empty shells lying around um yeah so i'm quite happy with how it's turning out so in the next part we'll be working on the base and i'll be showing you how i do the base um and then we're pretty much there we're, we're going to be pretty much done at that point um so yeah thanks very much for watching as always if you haven't already hit the like and subscribe hit the little bell notification um, and leave any comments etc if there's any questions or, or what have you um, or if you don't like the way i've done it then obviously let me know um, yeah so that's it really that's it for this bit so the, the kit itself is done we're now going to move on to the vignette base and um, there has been some comments where people wanted to see how i would do the base how i would approach that um, so i'll show that in the next video and then for, for this particular build, we're going to be done. So, um, so yeah, until next time, guys, stay safe. Happy hobbying. Bye-bye.